Hey kids, do you like Star Trek? Do you want more new Star Trek Discovery related stories? Then how about trying out a box of cannon? In every box comes an all new Star Trek Discovery related story. We've got USS Discovery Blue, Mirror Universe Blue, an all new Tardigrade Lawsuit Blue. Cannon, cannon, have yourself a box of cannon. Every story is certified 100% cannon by Serial Box Scoundrels Limited, though continuity and coherence may not apply. Cannon, cannon, have yourself a box of cannon. Hey guys, welcome back to Trek on the Tube. Today is yet another review and Easter eggs video. This time we're talking about Star Trek Short Treks Episode 6, The Trouble with Edward. Now, you probably understood the reference I just made in the beginning of the video with the, the comedy bit. If you didn't, go back and watch the Short Treks. There's a, a, a post credit scene. You need to check that out. Alright. Okay. So this episode has been out for a while now, and I've watched it several times, to say the least, because it, I don't know, it, it, it troubled me. So much so, I even had to take a step back at one point and leave it alone for a while before I eventually came back to write this review. I even had a moment on Twitter there where I spoke about how elements in this new Star Trek we're getting sometimes make me sad, but I, as I said, I've now had time to reflect on the episode, on its implications, and I think I can now correctly voice my feelings. I bet you weren't expecting uh, so much for just a Tribbles episode, were you? Alright, The Trouble with Edward. It's a 12 minute comedy piece set in the world of Star Trek, and I like that. Star Trek 4 proved to us years ago that comedic Star Trek can potentially be some of the best Star Trek, so I do enjoy seeing others taking a stab at it. And at first, this Star Trek is really promising. It opens with beautiful visual effects and a nice pep talk from Captain Pike to this newly promoted Captain here, Captain Lucero. Yeah, the dialogue contains some pretty obvious exposition, but we're working with 10 minutes here. So that's absolutely fine, especially considering in the very brief moment these two characters interact, we feel the chemistry. Not for one second do I doubt these two know each other and have worked together for years. The camaraderie is present. Anyway, Captain Lucero beams aboard her new ship, takes command, and right away we're given a very Star Trek feeling conference room scene. But with a twist, because this is where the comedy begins. And I'm still on board at this point. I'm still really enjoying myself. This, uh, this, this Edward guy, he's clumsy with his words, clumsy with, with his tools, and, you know, as it's made clear to him by Captain Lucero, he's also pretty clumsy with his ideas, I guess. And the comedy in that scene works. If it even makes sense for me to say that, because comedy is just so subjective. It works for me. Anyway, that's for sure. He's asked if uh, Tribbles are intelligent at one point, and he answers it's hard to determine because they, they don't have a face. I, mean, I like that. That made me smile. I like that. So, his ideas are basically dismissed during the meeting. That makes him unhappy, angry at the captain even. Following this, we see one of his puerile attempts to get other people to dislike the captain as well. And then you see him directly disobeying an order and experiment on a Tribble nonetheless. One could equate this guy to a, a Barkley of sorts, I suppose, but there's a fundamental difference between the two characters. This guy seems like a dick. And, I mean, <laughs> he also doesn't seem very well adjusted to Starfleet. Anyway, it's around this moment around this halfway mark that things for me start going a little downhill. Edward is called into the captain's ready room and we are given a very long, very hard to watch, very unfunny conversation that has no place in Starfleet, let alone a Star Trek show. I understand what they tried to do, but it just didn't work. If you want to write comedy within the Star Trek universe, fine, that's absolutely fantastic, but there's a line you kinda can't cross, a, a, a line defined by the in-universe coherence. Don't write your jokes at the detriment of Star Trek and its fundamental values. In this moment, the episode goes from funny Star Trek to the off with a makeover. And though that may seem abstract, I'm sure some of you understand what I mean. Oh, don't get me wrong, The Office is hilarious, but the jokes they feature work within the context of a 21st century workspace and with 21st century people. You can't just repurpose that content for Star Trek by slapping uniforms on everyone. Truth be told, from then on, the, the short never fully recovers. The Captain Lucero moments become very unprofessional. She's <coughs> clapping to get Edward's attention, not even my own 21st century boss would do that. They have to evacuate the ship at one point and she just lets the dude die. I mean, regardless of what you think of him, you have to save him. That, that's your duty and it's also what is morally correct. And I mean, there was more than enough time to go and get him, but she didn't, she just watches him die. And then her justification for the whole situation is Edward was an idiot. Yes, he was an idiot. But I mean, you could have self-destructed the ship. 
or, or something, considering you were already shooting at them in the first place. There's also minor visual effects issues in that final part, contrasting with the breathtaking opening shot. Here we get this very cheap, unnecessary wave effect added to the triples at some point. I, I don't know if it's just to add movement, but it, it feels cheap. There was also no visual point of contact when the triples piled onto the force field. It's nothing too big, but it still is noticeable. And there's one final thing that bugs me, and I, I was gonna call the cannon police for this, but I know they're they're very busy people, so, you know, I'll, I'll handle this myself. Enterprise establishes that Tribbles are prodigious breeders. It's actually stated that they are basically only capable of eating and breeding, and they're outlawed on most worlds. You know, implying that the Tribble problem is already a big thing in that time period, many, many years before Discovery takes place. These facts now seem to be contradicted by Edward's statement, they breed very slowly. Technically, there are no numbers explicitly mentioned, so it's not so much canon breaking, as it is the usual discovery technique of canon bending, but this time it really feels like the people behind this episode don't even know that Enterprise exists, or they just don't care. Not to mention the scientific name featured in the short differs from the one we saw in Deep Space Nine. Again, though, it's, it's technically canon bending because scientific names do change, or, or can change over time. I will say this though, it takes no more than one minute to go on the internet, type in Tribbles, go to Memory Alpha and find the information you need. And either they didn't do that, which frankly baffles me, or they did do that, but simply selected the information they wanted and dismissed the information they didn't like, which baffles me just as much, if not more. Alright, so the quality of the second half is kind of low, and that's what you end on so naturally, that's what sticks in your mind. But I'll tell you what, even if it's not the best short treks, even if it does have its flaws, I'm, I'm okay with it. H. John Benjamin gives a great performance as Edward. The music is actually pretty inspiring here. The nods and references to the other iterations of Star Trek are very welcome, and all the sets are beautiful. Apart from that one triple effect, uh, the CGI was great. And I do congratulate the decision to not shy away from making a full-blown comedy. It's, it's great. I do have my conflicting thoughts about the episode, but overall, it's, it's not bad. I think my problem lies here more with uh, certain decisions that I made behind the scene. And, uh, yeah, I can't, you know, I can't hold it against the episode itself, I suppose. Anyway. Easter eggs and references, and brace yourself because there's there's quite a few, mostly triple related, let's, let's be honest. Alright, let's go. The non-triple related Easter eggs first, and they are this trill. She's a spotted version, not a forehead version. Just because there are trills in Starfleet, it doesn't mean that Starfleet are aware of the symbionts, and chances are this officer doesn't even have one in her. On a side note, I think this is the first time we see a trill with a dark pigmentation. If, if humans are any kind of example or indication in this, it would mean that the trill homeworld features some hot continents and some cold continents, thus the varying pigmentations. The science ship on which this whole thing is taking place is a class of vessel that we've seen before in the first season of Discovery. The uniforms featured on board are varied to say the least. We've got this blue Discovery style uniform, the, the US Enterprise classic three colored uniforms from Discovery season two, and now uh, this, which looks like a, I don't know, a non-commissioned uniform, or considering it's a science vessel, people wearing this could be civilian scientists brought in by Starfleet to help with the issue they're dealing with. You know, I'm not sure. All right, so tribbles. Sometimes used as Easter eggs themselves, like in the Kelvin timeline or in the first season of Discovery, here they are the species at the center of the story. And so the Easter eggs and references are rather about them or related to them. And they include technically the episode title, The Trouble with Edward. It's a clear homage to the original series title, The Trouble with Tribbles. <sighs> Get off. The new or different scientific name, Tribblustis, Vetricosis. The other name was Polygeminus Grex, and that was featured in Deep Space Nine. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Just... Be gone. The Triple Homeworld is confirmed as Iota Geminorium IV, which was also first established in Deep Space Nine. That planet was later destroyed by the Klingon Empire as a result of a great war between the Klingons and the Tribble. Now, although this short trek doesn't explicitly talk about that event, it does have a nice little tie-in at the end, where one of the admirals tells, probably not Captain anymore, Lucero, that Tribbles just found their way into Klingon space. <sighs> just... would you... fucking... We also get a bunch of visual references to the classic Tribble episodes, people sitting on Tribbles, Tribbles in the circuitry, etc, etc. And there you have it, those are the references and easter eggs, that was my review. Two um, final just 
random thoughts. This is a triple hoover, essentially, and though the initial joke is fun, I can't help but wonder where they go, because there doesn't seem to be a very big bag of any kind. I mean, I, my guess is this works like a, a shredder or a blender, <laughs> so as disgusting as it may seem, there's probably just triple mush inside. Also, traditionally, what has been considered canon in Star Trek, so what is considered the official story of Star Trek, has always been everything featured on screen. Movies, and TV shows, but I, I think we, the fandom, can all agree that this post credit scene here is, is no more than a joke. It's fun, um, but it makes no sense to have it within the, the official continuity of the story. It's, it's not canon. Alright, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Just to let you know, I've also done a full conversation about this episode and the previous one with my good friend Starfleet Boy. If you're interested in hearing a bit of a, a back and forth, you can check that out on his channel. Link in the description. Keep in mind those discussions are more reactions than they are reviews, and they have a tendency of going a little off topic. As, as he says so well, it's casual and informal. Also, my opinions can evolve over time and after multiple rewatches, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. That's why it so happens that when I get to my actual review, what you just watched now, not every thought, not every opinion might match up completely with what I once said. Also, frankly, the discussion itself always is helpful because it's a sharing of opinions and viewpoints and that can very well enlighten me as well as affect my own views. Anyway, like, subscribe, share with your friends, don't forget to support this channel on Patreon, go buy a shirt, and uh, as usual, live long and prosper.